Okay, polar coordinates are just a different way of locating points in a plane. Now you're probably familiar with doing rectangular coordinates where if you have a point 4 comma 8 you go out 1, 2, 3, 4 in the horizontal direction and you go up 8 in the vertical direction and there's your point 4, 8. You can only make 90 degree turns in rectangular coordinates. Polar coordinates locate points by first rotating so you're facing in a certain direction and then you walk out that number of units. Here is zero and you're standing at the pole here and you're going to go pi over four radians or 45 degrees. So you're standing at the pole, you've rotated to your facing in a pi over four direction and then you walk out one, two, three, four units. And there's the point four pi over four. This part is your radius. That's how far out you walk, four units. And this part is your theta. That's the angle you turn so you're facing in the right direction to walk. So we can convert back and forth between polar and rectangular. To convert from polar to rectangular, you're going to use these two equations. X is R cosine theta and Y is R sine theta. That's because, if you recall, there's R, there's theta, and here's X and here's Y. And so the sine of theta is Y over R, or R equals, or R sine theta equals Y, and the cosine of theta equals X over R, so R cosine theta equals X. So they come from the definition of sine and cosine. So if you want to convert this point in polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, you just say, okay, X is equal to R cosine 240 degrees, which is 8 times negative 1 half or negative 4. The cosine of 240 is negative 1 half. Y is 8 sine 240, which is 8 times negative root 3 over 2, which is negative 4 root 3. So this point in rectangular coordinates would be negative 4 comma negative 4 root 3. To convert from rectangular to polar, you're going to use these two equations. R is the square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. So if I have this x coordinate and this y coordinate, then R is going to be the square root of negative 5 squared plus 12 squared which is the square root of 25 plus 144, which is the square root of 169, which is 13. Now, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a reference angle first. So I'm going to ignore that negative 5. But think about what quadrant that's in. Negative 5, negative 12 is in the third quadrant, so our theta is going to have to go all the way around. No, I'm sorry, in the second quadrant, isn't it? My mistake. So negative 5, 12 is right up there, so theta is going to have to go all the way around to there in the second quadrant. What we're going to do is get this reference theta first, okay? So that'll equal our reference theta. And we need our calculator to do that. So that's going to be second tangent 12 divided by 5. And I get 67.38. So 
if this angle is 67.38 right here, then the theta we're looking for is 180 minus that. And it's 112.62. So theta is 112.62. So my advice is when you're finding theta, always be aware of what quadrant you're in before you start, okay? and go for the reference angle first. Okay, so we can also use conversion formulas to convert actual equations. Here's an easy one. We're going to convert the rectangular equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. Well, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r squared is going to equal 25 because I can just replace that x squared plus y squared with r squared which means that r is 5. And that should make sense if you think about it because remember what this graphs, x squared plus y squared equals 25? That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5. So roughly speaking, it looks like that. Well, that's the rectangular form of a circle with radius 5 centered at the origin. Here's the polar form. You see how simple it is? And all it's saying is, okay, starting at the pole, your point can be anywhere you want it just so long as the radius never is less than or more than 5. It's always exactly 5. And so any point that is 5 units away from the pole works for this equation and you get a circle. Okay, let's convert y equals x squared to a polar equation. Well, y is r sine theta, and x squared will be r squared cosine squared theta. I'm going to divide both sides by r. and I'm going to divide both sides by cosine squared. In our polar equation, we want to have r equal something in terms of theta. So I'm going to split the cosine squared like this. And sine over cosine is tangent, and 1 over cosine is secant. So that is our polar form of that parabola, y equals x squared. Okay, how about this? Convert theta equals pi over 6 to rectangular form. Well, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, so we'll set that equal to pi over 6. And if the inverse tangent of y over x equals pi over 6, then the regular tangent of pi over 6 equals y over x. The ratio and the angle just switch places when we go from inverse tangent to regular tangent. Okay, so tangent of pi over 6 is just root 3 over 3. So I have root 3 over 3x equals y, which is a line whose slope is root 3 over 3 going through the origin. And so what we're saying here is that the line whose slope root 3 over 3 going through the origin equals y is the same line where the points are always locked on the angle pi over 6. So r can be any length we want, but theta is locked on that angle. Okay, last one. We're going to convert r squared equals sine to theta to rectangular form. So I've got r squared equals, now I'm going to change sine 2 theta to 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, and if x equals r cosine theta, 
in y equals r sine theta, then x over r will equal cosine theta, and y over r will equal sine theta. And remember that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So I've got x squared plus y squared equals 2 y over r, because that's what we said sine theta is equal to, times x over r, because that's what we said cosine is equal to, which gives me 2xy over r squared. And that means that x squared plus y squared is equal to 2xy over x squared plus y squared. OK, so let's multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared. And from that, I can expand this out. That's going to give me x to the fourth plus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth and that equals 2xy, and getting everything over on one side, you have 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth minus 2xy equals zero. That is a pretty complicated rectangular equation, and it came from a relatively simple polar equation. And when we start getting into graphing polar equations, you'll see how nice it is to graph something in polar form as opposed to trying to do it in rectangular form.